And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Abraham, those of us who are new at this um, are really curious, how could a deliberate creator like Esther uh, end up doing a seminar with a cough drop in your mouth? <laughs> when you chew them, we can hear it. <laughs> Almost made you laugh. I've been trying for over 20 years to make them laugh. It's not over. <laughs> I can't make you smile. So your question is? Yeah, what, what happened? You are wanting to hold Esther to the standard of what? Humanity. Put your microphone on. You have a question for us? Yes. Uh, We'd like you to come to the hot seat. I'm speaking, I am the voice of the millions of people. <laughs> Anything that you see, anyone experiencing, that is a diminishment of well-being, always at the root of it is resistance. There is no question about it. Mm -hmm. So your question for the masses that may be wondering is what kind of things are going on in Esther's experience that would cause her to have a voice that sounds like this? It's a combination of things along this emotional scale where Despair is here, and appreciation is here, and overwhelmment is somewhere in the middle. It is absolutely possible to put physical conditions, you can place them along the emotional scale. In other words, if someone is experiencing enormous amounts of stress, ranging somewhere from powerlessness to rage, mm -hmm their physical condition in time would be something that you would call more severe in nature. In other words, that's where strokes and heart attacks come from, where life causes you to ask for a lot, the energy moves fast, and your attention to whatever you're giving your attention to does not allow it. If you are feeling mostly joy, somewhere from hope to joy, you would, in terms of your physicality, show very little evidence of anything that you would call dis-ease. If you are ranging somewhere in the area of overwhelmment or frustration, that's where something like this fits. It is not as severe a stress, but it is an awareness that there is more that needs to be done in a period of time than can be accomplished. We would say to you, that at the basis of this is all of the movement that is happening around the secret mm -hmm. and all of the telephone calls, television interviews, radio interviews, the barrage of information of people who are asking for Esther's voice to speak to them. So many more than there is possibly time to even deal with. Yesterday, as she downloaded email, there were 27 new requests of people that are wanting to do a radio show, a television movie, some sort of thing. And so Esther is in this place where the contrast has put her into a place of clear wanting. In other words, she's understanding that more are asking. And she likes the idea of them hearing the clear voice about what is happening but she is understanding that there is not enough of her to go around for all of the requests that are coming in. And we think that that feeling of overwhelmment is the vibrational root of all of this. Mm -hmm. And then we watch the two of you who do your best to say yes to as many as you can. So we watch you driving and meeting and driving and meeting and doing your weekly. And almost the last thing that you tend to is your own personal experience. And so we think it's a wonderful thing when something becomes exaggerated enough. In other words, Esther gets tired, but she can take tired. Right. 
If we're tired, there's no point in lining up energy. <laughs> she can take overwhelmment. For overwhelmment, there's no point in lining up energy. Mm. But let her voice be diminished when she feels that that is what you have come to hear. Mm -hmm. That gets her attention. And we are certain that she will do some lining up of energy about this. And we would begin by saying, nothing has gone wrong, everything is right, everyone is not ready for this leading edge seminar. And those who are ready for this leading edge seminar, you have plenty of time to get to plenty of places for this leading edge seminar. We said to Esther in the beginning of her beginning to receive us, as she said, Abraham, do you expect me to tell this to the world? Right. And we said to her, no, we are only telling you. And the desire to assist those in understanding is something that has evolved among all of you, among all of you. Mm -hmm. We think as Esther settles back into this and realizes that the world is not ready for this seminar. She will relax a little bit and stop worrying about how she's going to get herself to the world. Mm. Law of attraction will bring those like you who are ready. Mm. And as those like you who are ready continue the expansion of the message, you see. That is what the two of you have always said. And that's what we have always been about too. We are not concerned about the masses learning this leading edge information. There has been much that has been said even today that has not been said before. Right. And we are not concerned about the world hearing it. The world is not ready for it. And we trust law of attraction to bring those who are ready to what they are ready for. And there are plenty of others. You see, for many people, things like the secret or so many other seminars are being taught are downstream. In other words, that's information that for most is just what they are now ready to reach for. While for Esther, those seminars feel upstream to her because what she wants is the leading edge material. She does not want to teach the babies who are just beginning to hear about law of attraction. She wants the leading edge people who are ready to ask the question that has never been asked, you mm -hmm. see. And so it is that sort of upheaval, temporary upheaval, blessed upheaval, blessed contrast. Isn't it nice to have something happen that evokes within you a keen awareness of what you don't want, which blasts out before you a keen awareness of what you do want. And then, as you come into alignment with that, you are better for having had the experience. So what leading edge question would you like to ask? Thank you.